dinosaurs ruled the earth for over 165 million years and in that time grew to be some of the largest animals the world has ever seen. But despite this, all dinosaurs had to come from somewhere and that somewhere was an egg. Archosaurs, the group that contains crocodiles, birds and all non-avian dinosaurs all produce eggs. But the extent to which the organism cares for them is varied. Crocodiles will often bury their eggs before protecting their young for a year after they hatch, whereas most birds will sit and brood their eggs for months on end before protecting and feeding their young. So with dinosaurs being slap bang in the middle of these two groups evolutionarily, what did they do? Well, let's find out. Evidence for dinosaur egg laying and parenting was first discovered in 1978. At a site in Montana dubbed Egg Mountain, the remains of the genera Myasaura were uncovered. The fossil consisted of a skull with partial mandible and predentary fragments, and was given its generic name after the Greek goddess Maya, or the Good Mother. A fitting name. Fitting because not far from the specimen, a fossilized nest was uncovered showing both eggshells and juvenile dinosaurs within. It was these youngsters, however, that caught people's attention, as their size indicated they were older than newly hatched individuals, and their teeth seemed to show signs of wear, indicating they were possibly bought food while still in the nest. This discovery brought newfound attention to the site, and soon after, several more nests were uncovered along with fossil trackways, showing this site was a nesting colony, similar to those seen in modern seabirds. Once hatched, the young Myasaura would stay in the nest before undergoing a rapid period of growth before slowing down at around half their full size, at which point they would leave the nest and join the herd. During this period, it appears they underwent a change in locomotion as well. Evidence from the tibia bones of 50 specimens of Myasaura shows signs of strain, indicating that the youngsters underwent a change in locomotion once reaching adulthood, going from a primitive bipedal stance to a more derived quadrupedal one. With this discovery, paleontologists now knew that not only did dinosaurs lay eggs, but that they would have formed large colonies to do so and cared for their young in some way. But Myasaura was far from the first dinosaur to do this. In fact, a site in South Africa predates Egg Mountain by over a hundred million years. In the Golden Gate Highlands National Park, a clutch of eight eggs attributed to the genus Massospondylus were unearthed by paleontologist James Kitchen. Subsequent visits to the site soon revealed that this clutch was incomplete, and new discoveries found that this dinosaur would lay large clutches of eggs, with the biggest comprising of 34 in total. The nest fossils at the site appear in different layers within the rock face with rocks in between them showing the site underwent periods of both flooding and desiccation. This tells us that not only was the site possibly next to a lake, but also that the site was used multiple times and had periods where egg laying may have been seasonally viable, which would be the oldest known occurrence of repeated nesting at a site in dinosaurs. Once hatched, the juveniles would probably have to spend a little bit of time under the watch of mama or papa. Young massospondylus specimens showed that their pelvic girdle and caudal vertebra were relatively small. Couple this with a very large head relative to the body Body and a lack of apparent teeth, it is inferred that the juveniles would need at least some help getting started in life. This apparent parental care is different from larger, more derived sauropodomorphs, which appear to have left their young soon after laying the eggs. This has led to the theory that parental care was phased out in this group once they achieved gigantism. I mean, I can't blame them, as how does something so big look after something so small without, you know, crushing it? With this, paleontologists now had evidence that dinosaurs have been given a form of parental care for millions of years, and these finds are only two of many that have since been discovered. With all this evidence, researchers have been able to glean a lot of insight into the reproduction of dinosaurs, from the nest building to the caregiving. To start, dinosaurs would have to build nests in order to lay their eggs, 
As you've probably figured from the past two examples, these nests often come in two different forms. One being closed nests where the eggs are laid and covered and the second being open where the eggs are left uncovered or are partially buried. Today only crocodiles and megapode birds build closed nests with all other bird species building open nests. With this we can tell that the transition between the two probably happened in dinosaurs. So to look at who did what, researchers used two methods. Methods. One is looking at the egg's porosity, which basically just means how many holes the egg has in its shell, and the other is looking at the gas conductance of eggs. These state that eggs with high porosity and gas conductance were probably buried due to the low levels of oxygen available in these conditions. From the limited number of dinosaur eggs we have, we see that most basal groups such as Ornithischians and Titanosaurs probably buried their eggs. This is backed up by a site in India where over 250 Titanosaur eggs were uncovered, which appear to have been buried in sediment suitable for solar incubation. However, as you get into latter groups such as the theropods, we begin to see a switch to open or partially open nesting. But this isn't the case for all theropods, with Laurianosaurus showing evidence of closed nesting. For the the theropods that did build open nests, this is seen beautifully represented in the Oviraptorid Cetipati. A fossil that was given the nickname of Big Mama shows the partial skeleton of an adult individual sat atop a nest in a brooding position similar to birds. In fact, this switch in nesting style may have led to the evolution of birds in the first place. As no longer constrained to the ground to nest, dinosaurs were free to explore other habitats such as the tops of trees. Obviously to get to this point you need to actually lay some eggs and when it comes to this there are two common types seen in dinosaurs, a spherical shaped egg or an elongated one. When it comes to laying these eggs dinosaurs vary in layout types. Some egg clutches have been found laid in disorganized patterns or in arcs which usually consist of the spherical shaped eggs. Other clutches appear to be formed in organized patterns, some in paired rows or as is seen in the Oviraptoridae family, a circular pattern comprising of two or three layers. So now they've been laid, the eggs have to undergo the long process of incubation. And I'm starting to notice a pattern here because yet again, there are two types. The first type, and likely the basal method, is called passive incubation. This is where the incubation is done by the ambient temperature. To ensure the temperature is controlled, the eggs will be buried in sediment that allows for solar heating, which is shown in the previously mentioned titanosaur eggs from India. The other method is called active incubation, which is the method shown in the big mama specimen where the parent sits on top of the eggs and uses their body temperature to incubate the eggs which is seen in modern birds. Some scientists have said that this fossil doesn't in fact show incubation but instead guarding similar to that of crocodiles but this isn't widely accepted. Regardless of this the eggs have to be incubated and once this is done the eggs will hatch and now there's a new baby dinosaur in the world. So what happens next? Well despite what I said earlier there is no actual direct evidence for parental care in dinosaurs. All this speculation comes from the relatively underdeveloped skeletons of most juveniles and evidence of wear on the teeth of specimens found in nests. Evidence of parenting does become rarer when there is a large difference in size between the parent and child, which explains the absent nature of most sauropod parents, because it's not advised to squash your kid. This wasn't the case for all dinosaurs however. Whilst the extent to the actual care given to the young is contested, it can be inferred that dinosaurs probably guarded their young in some way as this is seen in all living archosaurs to some extent. When it came to feeding their young however, dinosaurs would have probably brought food back to the nest, similar to the process seen in modern day birds. With that however, the young dinosaurs are now well on their way to becoming the giants or dwarfs that they were destined to be. And that is how dinosaurs looked after their children, probably. Well guys, I hope you enjoyed that video, learning all about the wondrous process of dinosaur reproduction. If you know anyone else interested in this topic, please send the video their way. And if you're interested in this natural world of ours, please consider subscribing. Until next time, bye bye Spend a little bit of time under the watch of Mama at War. Yeah.